Coming to you with a special episode of On The Drive Home. Even though I'm not driving because I'm already at home. Check it. We got um, Rock Lee, who was featured on Bags and Bodies by Hitman Holla. Uh, Hitman Holla basically had a bunch of battle rappers in the house. They filmed for about a month or so. They did different challenges. They all stayed in the house. They were males. They were females. There were different games, interactions, solo things, group sessions. Uh, Tay Rock actually came on there. Some other artists. Um, there was controversy because Tay Rock recycled some bars. Anyways, it's on Coastal Rain TV for $5.99. It's uh, pretty much put on by Hitman Holla and another partner uh, that he named today. Anyway, what's going on? It was kind of messing up the whole situation, or I, I don't know, it's just bringing kind of a bad light on a hitman holler right now, is a battle rapper who goes by the name of Rock Lee. Um, I've actually <clears throat> been in smaller spaces with Rock Lee, haven't had much conversation with her, um, but I know she's uh, close to Free Game, shout out Free Game. Um, anyways, uh, that was pretty much all I knew about Rock Lee before she was on Bags and Bodies. Being on Bags and Bodies, um, I guess there was a situation between her and Snake Eyes. Uh, Snake Eyes is another battle rapper you all are probably familiar with. And I guess Snake Eyes got drunk one night, uh, was trying to push up on her, trying to, you know, get with her. And she wasn't having it. I guess he followed her to her room, kept getting hyphy in the hallway, ended up getting into it with bad news. They fight, whoop de wop right? Um, they try to have a vote on... You know, in the house to see, okay, is Snake Eyes staying or Snake Eyes got to go? They all voted for Snake Eyes to stay. Um, and so, you know, that filmed in like October. Right now it's December. You know, it was a few months back. And I guess Hitman Holla would reach out to everybody and all the producers would be available. If there's any issues, you could discuss it with them. It wasn't a problem, I guess, allegedly, right? Well, um... They've been starting to release the episodes, and an episode comes out where uh, Bad News is fighting Snake Eyes. I guess in the episode, they don't really explain why they're fighting. So Rock Lee makes an Instagram message and says, Hey, they were fighting because Snake Eyes was pushing up on me. I didn't want none. And then he got in the hallway high with Bad News. Bad News wasn't having it and gave me a one 2 whoop de whoop de wop laid him out, you know what I'm saying, and, and, and that's what that was, and she's speaking her piece, right, well, I guess she doesn't realize when everyone wakes up in the morning, there's all this news about pedophiles and uh, sexual harassment and sexual allegations all over the net on OTFMZ, other blog media outlets, and Hitman Holla, I guess, is getting hit up by Viacom like, yo, what the, what is this? What is this predator you've got in this house on your rap show? Hitman Holla, he's on Viacom. He's on uh, Wild and Out. He's been on TV for a long time. He's a celebrity, you know what I'm saying? And then these allegations come out that this is going on at his house. It doesn't look good. I guess Rock Lee isn't thinking about this. She's not considering that when she's bringing this case forward that... She was, uh, you know, sexual advances were made towards her that she didn't want, appreciate, or welcome. I guess the big gripe was, Hitman Holla's like, well, why didn't you say something way back then? Why do you wait till now? Like, we could have handled this all in-house. Rock Lee is pretty much saying, hey, I'm sorry I didn't think about the ramifications of my words. I just saw the episode, got triggered, and explained why that fight took place because I guess the episode doesn't explain why it took place so I mean a lot of people you know some people think that uh, she's doing it because she wants attention some people are doing you know saying she's clout or clout chasing looking for attention basically which she has been thrusted to the forefront of battle rap um, whether it was an intentional or not, everyone knows who Rock Lee is now, including people that have nothing to do with battle rap because she was saying that she's was, you know, sexual advances were made towards her that weren't welcome. Um, I guess later on she ends up touching the guy too. It gets kind of messy. Battle rap is messy. Battle rap is messy. You watch the World Cup? Yes, battle rap 
is messy. Very messy. Messy. <laughs> a lot going on in battle rap. I mean, you know, some days are slower, some days are faster, but pretty much everything going on in battle rap right now is drama, soap opera. But I guess that keeps us talking, that keeps us going. Anyways, um... So, uh, I joined Spaces, you know, I listened to it a little bit, I'm gonna add that at the end of the video, um, and, uh, you know, pretty much, there's people saying that they feel like she's lying, they feel like she's telling the truth, there's, you know, Snake Eyes is saying, oh, I wasn't doing all that, but, you know, it seems like he might have been, how are battle rappers responding to that, it's, it's a lot going on, it's, it's, it's more than I think we've, had to deal with in battle rap in a long time. It's so much drama right now. So much drama right now. One of the biggest battle rappers is in jail. Another battle rapper is snitching. You know, another uh, battle rap person is banging this other person. And this person is uh, touching people at parties. And this person is like, it's just craziness going on in battle rap. I don't understand it, but it's happening. Anyways. Um, let me know what you think about all this going on. Um, you know, do you think Snake Eyes is is wrong? Do you think he's lying? Do you think she's wrong? Do you think she's lying? Do you think they both have something to do with it? You know, do you think it's she should have handled this in-house earlier? Or was it a good idea for her to wait all the way until the show is out when everyone's observing to come with this? You know what I'm saying? Because... She had plenty of opportunity to come forward with this. You know what I'm saying? That's something that people are really upset about. That's one of the main things Hitman Holla is upset about. He's like, I asked you multiple times. We voted. Should he go? You said yes. You guys are, you cried when he left the house. Because it's a reality show, right? Some people got to go home. She cried when he left, right? So it's like, why now are you coming with this? So... I guess I see both sides. I want to know what you guys think. Um, because it's wild. Uh, um, like, subscribe, comment. Yeah. And anything we need, he got us. But like I said, it's because of me personally. It's personally why I didn't go to him about anything. That's a me thing. Definitely not a him thing. Bad news doesn't wear a fucking cape with the S on his chest. I never said that he was fighting for me. I said overall, like, that's where the, I said that's where the fight stemmed from. And I said that basically what led into him checking Snake. Because Snake came to him on the bullshit. And was like, man, listen, I don't know what you want. You calling bitches, you calling the bitches in holes. Why are you being weird to me? I never sat here and made it seem as if like news throw on a cake for me and no shit like that. I don't know where that came from neither. The only reason why I brought that up was because people were trying to, it's like you you explain one thing and people try to flip the narrative to another. I only brought I only said that because at one point people were coming to me asking me was Snake and News fighting over me. They were never fighting over me. I said if anything you could say it was more in defense, but it was definitely not over. I wasn't the main idea. I was a sub I was a subject of the matter though. Like that kind of like shit. But I wasn't the sole reason why he went toe to toe with Snake. No, I was not the sole reason. I never said I was the sole reason. I just said I was kind of like a part of it type shit. I ended up like, when, I don't even want to say it like that, but like, whatever. Again, yes, he apologized. I never actually accepted it. I just became cordial. Okay. I suppressed the situation. I tried to let it go because at the end of the day, and oh, and another thing is people try to be like, oh, well, why didn't you leave? Then this is an, uh, then this is an, uh, then this is an opportunity that could help my overall battle rap career. Like this could just help me as a person in general in many endeavors. Yes, like that was a situation that I didn't care for, but it's like, why would I pass up an opportunity because a nigga had me fucked up? I'm sorry, ain't no nigga worth me missing out on no goddamn opportunity. Not now one. So, yes, that's why I stayed. They, again, they asked me why did I ask him to leave. Majority was asking for him to stay. So it was like, I kind of just went with majority. I'm not going to sit here and act like I wanted him to. But if everybody else is saying yes, 
the castmates are saying yes. Again, I'm not cast. So it's like, who the fuck am I to go against the grain when I'm not even a part of the fucking cast yet to be like, nah, kick this nigga out. Fuck, I technically was supposed to be gone at that point. Um, Again, cordialness. I'm a person that suppress shit and I tend to, and I don't hold grudges. I'm not good at holding grudges. So eventually I just became okay with him being around. Never actually fully addressed the situation. You made an entire battle rap angle about me. With it. I'm not going to respond like they got it. But it's like, nah, I started realizing, bro, like this shit is a whole ass angle that nigga put on me that I'm stuck to deal with. Because even after this conversation, the angle is not going to go away. I will forever be known as a bitch that was fucking in the mansion. No matter how much I tell you, I didn't. No matter how much the other individual involved tell you that we didn't, y'all still going to put that shit on me. And the funny part about it is y'all going to put it on me, but I, I bet my I bet my next deposit that he's not going to get as much back. He's not going to get hit with as many bars and backlash about the shit as I will. And I dare somebody to tell me I'm lying. It's just as that I have to deal with the ramifications of the shit. I'm going to get all of the heat for it. He might get a bar there or two, maybe. But it's like, y'all know how niggas is. I'm the hoe for fucking a nigga, but like, he's 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 the big nigga. He's the GOAT type shit. So he's really not going to hear get no heat from it. Whatever. I bought it up because the episode triggered me. It made me remember why I didn't fuck with the situation. I didn't, uh, I didn't approve of the headlines. I do not use that terminology. I never said that shit, not once. And again, to say that people are trying to pay me to be a hoe, I just genuinely want to know when did that justify anything of the situation brought up. I still don't know how implying that I was a hoe made anything justifiable. When somebody explained that shit to me, like, I don't know. But I never knew that that made anything justifiable. Because again, I could have been fucking bankhead bouncing my pussy all across the United goddamn states. But if I choose, if I say I don't want to fuck on one nigga, then I have every right to say I don't want to fuck on one nigga. Like, I didn't know me fucking other people made it a requirement for me to fuck a different individual. When I wasn't even fucking on the first individual to begin with. So, yeah. Like, that's that. I would say, like, from this point, I'm good. People ask me, well, what do you want from the situation? That I'm got to be transparent as hell. I don't know what I want. I've been saying, I don't know how I feel. I didn't know how I feel when the situation happened. I couldn't describe to you how I felt when I watched the episode. I couldn't describe, I can't tell you how I feel. I don't know how I feel. So with that being said, I really don't know how I want to go ahead of the situation. It was because it was never my intentions to be like, I, I, I don't know. Like I was never going, it was never in my first thought to be like, fuck this nigga, get this nigga out of here. It was never my first thought. Oh, I'm about to capitalize off this shit. I just, wanted to speak my piece that was it i just wanted to speak my piece because i just felt that it didn't feel fair for a nigga to make a whole narrative about me and i don't even get a chance to explain why i feel like i deserve an explanation for my to defend myself i feel like i owe myself that and that was just my whole point of even saying it but like as far as what do we what do we do from here i don't know i'm still trying to like figure out my emotions right now. Like, I can't even eat my fucking food that's sitting in front of me because, like, I'm just so wound up with different emotions and feelings. It's like, I don't know how I feel. That's the God's honest truth. That's just that. Um, And moving forward, like, I don't know how I feel moving forward, neither. I don't know. I just know like this, this shit just blew up in my face and I'm, and I'm really not a person that deals good with confrontation. So it's like, I'm still trying to like deal with that shit. I'm trying to process the confrontation part before I even can get to a solution. That's the God's honest, transparent truth. Um, 
People ask why I wasn't going to spaces and shit earlier. Like I said, like I was too all over the place. The way I'm speaking to y'all right now, I wouldn't have even be able to like properly get a sentence out like what three hours ago. I'm just now getting to a point where I'm calm enough to actually speak. That's the guy's honest truth. Um, um, let me see. And um, yeah. That like I don't know what else more that there is to say. That's that's kind of what it just boils down to. Listen, I just want to say one thing, girl. Let me tell you something. Being called a hoe in battle rap at this point is like a fucking bag bad of a badge of honor, child. Take that shit with a grain of salt. Because you are gonna be called a hoe a lot more than in a motherfucking house full of motherfucking niggas that wanna fuck. All right. At the end of the day, a hoe is a hoe, and a hoe could be a housewife. Understood? Don't overstand it. Understood? You hear me? So all that being called a hoe shit should phase you in battle rap. You gonna be called a thousand more hoes. As as your time goes on, you're gonna be called a thousand more hoes. And guess what? Being called a hoe. Just means you got good pussy energy. You got good pussy energy, girl. Be happy. Niggas is on your body. What we talking about? Oh, Chuck. Girl, now you got me in here blushing. Oh, shit. Stop. I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just telling you, like, let me tell you something. If you was ugly, you ain't have no personality, nobody would give a fuck about you. You wouldn't be a hoe. Your energy's good. Your vibe is straight. You a hoe. That's it. These hoes don't come and go in battle rap. Understand? You got to be a good one to be a hoe in battle rap. I'm just telling you that. You ain't got to pop pussy to be a hoe in battle rap either. That's all I'm saying. The situation is unfortunate. Yes, a nigga's going to be a nigga. Yes. And in that situation, I understand how you feel. You feel disrespected. But the whole shit, for me, dust that shit off, baby. Because it's coming. It's coming. And you're going to hear way more holistic statistics. You're going to be a holistic at this point. All right? That's it. You're just going to be a holistic, and it is what it is. Okay, baby? That's it. Just take the ladder and rise up on that bitch and keep climbing. You starting at a lowercase hoe, little h. Once you get to big uppercase hoe, bitch, you made it. You're a fucking star, right? That's it. Yeah, That's I got you. Up. Don't let that that whole shit is 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 mental. You know what I'm saying? Anybody could call you a hoe. Eve was a hoe. She ate the fucking apple. Okay. So listen, if she could listen, if she could eat the apple, and now we all here, or however that fucking went in the Bible, bitch. Listen. Don't let none of that shit phase you. Keep doing what you're doing. All right? Keep being fucking great. And go eat. That's the problem. Bitch, you're hungry. I got a fucking tension headache like a mug. I don't even think I drink water. Yet you're today. fucking hungry. That's the problem. You need to eat something. That's what it is. You're stressing yourself out. Go eat a steak. Because from what I see on Instagram, hoes love to eat steak. So... That's that. Oh, crap. Bitch, well, if anybody want to treat this hoe out the stake, my cash listen, app is connected to my bio. The cash shit. app, listen, because hoes got to eat. Don't ever starve yourself. I'm trying to tell you because a real hoe don't starve. They get to it. Don't be depressed. Don't be stressed. That's all I had to say, child, because I was listening like, you know what? This is ridiculous. Mm -mm. The whole stigma and battle rap, that's light work. That shit should not stress you out. Yeah, being disrespected, I get it. But the whole shit, take that shit with a grain of salt and keep it pushing. Because in battle rap, there's going to be a lot more holes to come. You just getting started. And that's Do it. Not hear you. That's it. It's very unfortunate, but you got to not take how niggas feel about you when they in their feelings. Because the niggas going to always feel some, some type of way when they in their feelings. And that's it. That's all I had to say. I just had to make light of the situation because I'm I got sick of it already. It's been too much all day. 